Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I want to talk to you today about something very important in bankruptcy, and that is something called exemptions. And basically what exemptions are, uh, that's property that you can protect when you file bankruptcy. So for bankruptcy purposes, it does not exist, nobody has any claim against it, and you're not going to lose it when you file bankruptcy. And again, common sense would tell you when you file bankruptcy, you're not going to lose everything. You're not, they're not going to take your clothes away or your, your, your TV or your clock radio, that sort of thing. But uh, the things that you can protect are set out very clearly in the law, and you need to be aware of them. And, and of course, the main thing is when you talk to your lawyer, uh, you need to make a very accurate list of your assets so that your lawyer includes uh, everything he can exempt as exempt property so there's no surprises down the road. And, and the exemption statute uh, is actually set forth in Georgia law. Georgia has, uh, and I mentioned this because it's, it's something you, you want to be avoid confusion on the internet, Georgia has its own exemption rules. Uh, there's a federal exemption statute that does not apply. Georgia has opted out of the federal scheme. So uh, if you look, you're looking on the internet and you see, you know, property you can shelter and it's from a, a lawyer in North Carolina or a lawyer in Kansas or California, that does not apply here in Georgia. Uh, Georgia has its own exemption statute, which is the official code of Georgia, section 44.13.100. I'm going to give you a link here on the screen where you can look at the exemption statute. And examples of exemptions would be uh, equity in real estate, $21,500, household goods, I think it's $5,000 with no one item worth more than I think, $600, um, motor vehicles, $3,500, jewelry, $500, and there's a number of things that, 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 that are listed. There's some things that are not going to be sheltered. Again, a, like I said, a, a, something more than $600 of household goods. You may have, a, let's say, an antique uh, would probably not be sheltered. Um, a TV that's a $20,000 entertainment center, that would probably not be sheltered because, again, it's going to meet, uh, it's going to be worth more than what's allowed. And again, we're talking about equity, by the way. So if there's a lien against it uh, and there's no equity there, uh, that's a different story. But that could raise other problems. But we're only talking about equity that you would get if you were to liquidate or sell the property. So, again, you want to make sure you give your lawyer a very, very clear idea of what you own. Uh, and also, if you file jointly with your spouse, you would double those exemptions. So, in the case of real estate, it's $21,500 for an individual. You double that, you know, $43,000 for a married couple. So, there's a pretty good amount of real estate you can shelter. Now, if you have assets that are not exempt, let's say you've got real estate uh, and you've got $100,000 of equity and you can shelter 43000 of it, uh, well, the remainder, the difference is going to be um, something, $57,000 is going to be called non-exempt equity. And if you have non-exempt equity, what happens there is either A, uh, the trustee will sell it, you, you don't oppose the trustee selling the, the asset, liquidating it and paying that equity, that non-exempt equity to creditors and rebating back to you uh, the part that you declared is exempt. Or you could make an offer to buy the trustee out of the estate's interest. So in the case of real estate, um, since real estate's kind of a market function, you may offer the trustee, you know, forty thousand dollars in that fifty $53,000 or $57,000 of equity off from $40,000 paid over the course of a year. And that may be a way to deal with that. And trustees will negotiate with you on things like that, again, uh, through your attorney. Um, you could also convert the case to a Chapter 13, in which case you would have to account for that equity, that non-exempt equity, uh, and what you pay in your Chapter 13 plan, something called the liquidation test, where you have to pay your unsecureds at least what they would get if the trustee was to liquidate your non-exempt equity. So big picture is that, that equity is a really important concept uh, in bankruptcy, knowing what you own, what you could liquidate, wh how much that would turn into in terms of cash and declaring as much as you possibly can. So it's really important. One of the things I stress to my clients is give me a very clear idea of what you own so we can maximize every penny of your exemption. Now, I will tell you that as a practical matter, trustees do not make a habit of going out to people's houses and looking to see what they own. But they have the power to do that. So uh, if you were to declare you know, a list of exemptions and it was incomplete and the trustee found out about it somehow, um, that could be a real problem. The trustee could then go move to disallow all of your exemptions and you could lose uh, everything. Obviously not a, not a good result. So again, really important to reveal to your lawyer, fill out his questionnaire very clearly. In my case, I have a very 
thorough questionnaire uh, to make sure that all of your assets are listed so that I can declare everything possible as exempt property. So when you hear the term exemption or exempt property, uh, that is referring to assets and equity uh, that you can declare as sheltered when you file bankruptcy. Any questions about exemptions or equity or bankruptcy, uh, please feel free to call my office. I'm more than happy to help you any way I can. Again, I'm Jonathan Ginsberg, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks a lot.